All right, in this short video, we're going to talk about skeletal muscle and how its muscle structure is involved in muscle contraction. This is just to cover the basics so we can cover stuff in more detail in class. So by way of outline, first we'll talk about the structure of muscle. Your muscle is made up of multiple different layers. When you think about a muscle like, say, your biceps, uh, that's actually a collection of many, many muscle cells. If we look in at this diagram here, we have the whole muscle, and that whole muscle is made up of things called fascicles. Each fascicle right here is made up of many different muscle cells. So a fascicle is a group of muscle cells. And if we zoom down here, this is a muscle cell. I'm sorry, this is a fascicle. And so here's a fascicle. And each fascicle is made up of multiple muscle cells. So each one of these little things in here represents a muscle cell. If you zoom, zoom in on a muscle cell, just single fiber or muscle cell, this means the same thing, muscle cell, muscle fiber. If you zoom in even more, you can see that a muscle cell is made up of a series of sarcomeres. Uh, you can see how there are, uh, it looks kind of like a, a chain of dark and then light, then dark, then light. It's called striations. And those striations are due to the sarcomeres or the, the alignment of actin and myosin, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Sarcomeres and the myofibrils, is, that's where the contraction really occurs. This isn't an anatomy class, so I don't expect you to know a ton about the anatomy of what's going on, but just this, this much, make sure you understand what a myofiber is and what a muscle cell is and, and these terms that I've talked about. Other structures that you should be aware of that will help you out during this class is, first, we've talked about myofibrils. Uh, so down in the myofibrils, you have the actin and the myosin. So it's just a collection of actin and myosin, and there are many myofibrils within a muscle cell or a muscle fiber. Uh, in a muscle fiber, you also have transverse tubules, and you can see these little openings for transverse tubules. And they're like invaginations in the, the muscle cell. Uh, kind of like when you poke your finger into a balloon, these transverse tubules, they're technically still the outside of the cell, but they perforate into the interior. Uh, another example would be kind of like the holes in Swiss cheese, right? And that's what the transverse tubules are. And they, oh, they transmit action potentials deep into the muscle fiber. We'll talk about those in the next video. Another important thing right next to the transverse tubule, so on this take we have the transverse tubule in the purple. On each side of the transverse tubule, you have the terminal cisternae or lateral sac of the sarcoplasmic reticulum, the blue. The sarcoplasmic reticulum, or sometimes called the SR, this is what stores a lot of calcium in here. So there's a bunch of calcium built up, and it will release the calcium when an action potential travels down the T tubule to stimulate, and that calcium will then stimulate muscle contraction. Also within the muscle cell, you have the mitochondria, multiple mitochondria. And these mitochondria are what provide a lot of the ATP. We'll talk about those when we discuss metabolism, uh, but they're all throughout the muscle cell and provide ATP derived from aerobic metabolism. And then you have multiple nuclei uh, that are under the, the cell membrane, the sarcolemma is the cell membrane. And muscle fibers are unique in that they have multiple nuclei, not just one. Most cells just have a single nuclei, but muscles, because they can be very big and long, uh, they have multiple nuclei to be in charge of different regions. All right, so that's uh, about the structure. But how does the structure of the muscle, particularly down to the level of the myofiber and the sarcomere, how does that actually let your muscle shorten or contract. And it will come down to, to this picture here. This illustrates a sarcomere. It's a very general illustration of a sarcomere where you have a thick filament, which is primarily made up of your myosin, and a thin filament, which is made primarily of your actin. And on the outside of each is a Z-line, or kind of like a structure or a scaffolding to hold everything in place. We'll talk about how those work together to cause a contraction. So your, your thick filament in the blue over here 
It's composed primarily of myosin, and that, this is the myosin here. You have myosin heads, has a little head with a long tail, and it's called thick, a thick filament, because these are very big, they're large proteins, and they cause, when you look at them from a microscope, you can see those, the myosin, it's, it's darker. You can see it quite a bit darker, so it's a thick filament. And the, the myosin head here is what will actually pivot and move to tug and cause a contraction. The thin filament uh, right here in the green is primarily made of actin, which is the green little pearl strand. And then you have troponin, which is uh, right here, this yellow part that binds onto one of the actins. And then bound to the troponin and also on top of the actin is this long string called tropomyosin. Now the tropomyosin, as we'll talk about later, it covers the binding sites for myosin. So when tropomyosin is in place, it prevents actin and myosin from interacting and keeps you from contracting. The thin so the thin filament is primarily made of actin and troponin and tropo tropomyosin. The, each muscle has a sarcomere, uh, many, many sarcomeres in series. So a sarcomere is defined just as the distance or what falls between two Z lines, right? And so the distance of a sarcomere is somewhere around 0 0.0025 millimeters, very, very small. And <clears throat> uh, when an, a myosin head is activated, it reaches out to the actin and pulls it in, pulls it in toward the center. They're making the distance between the two light chains or the two thin filaments smaller. So a sarcomere, it, these, lots of these happen in series within a muscle, and the sarcomere is really what causes everything to contract. If you look at it in a microscope, so this is a muscle sample. Uh, if you take a cross-section of it, looking at it, uh, we can see the sarcomere. These things, the description up here from the textbook that I got this from doesn't line up very well. So this, the sarcomere would be from this dark, this is one Z line, all the way to this next Z line, okay? And then in the middle, you have a dark part where that, the dark part is where your myosin is. And wherever the myosin is, that's called an A band. A meaning anisotropic, and that just means dark uh, in, I think, German. Then you can see in the middle of that A band, you have an especially dark spot, uh, which is called the M line. And that just represents the middle. And on the sides you can see on either side of the Z line, it's light, right? And that's called the I band. And the I band is where you only have, act, where you don't have myosin. So dark band is wherever myosin is, the A band wherever myosin is, the I band is wherever myosin is not, and it's primarily your actin and troponin and tropomyosin. And this is just another illustration of that. So we have the Z lines coming down the side, kind of in a scaffolding. Extending off the Z lines, you have the actin with its myos actin and troponin and tropomyosin right here. You can see that the actin doesn't go all the way. There's a gap between the actins, right? Uh, and then uh, right here, you have the myosin and the myosin is really dark. And so wherever the myosin is, that's your A band, right? Right in the middle of the myosin, you have a bulk where a bunch of proteins connect and make it especially dark, and that's the H, the M line. And then you can see the H zone is actually in the middle of the A band, but it's the part where it's gonna be a little bit lighter in the A band because there is no actin, right? So you can see the actin kind of stops right about here, leaving a blank spot where it's only myosin. So it gets a little lighter because you don't have that double overlap of actin and myosin. You just have myosin at the A band, or sorry, at the H zone. These, you'll need to understand these different zones and how they're affected by different contractions like shortening contractions and lengthening contractions, what happens with each zone.
All right, now that that uh, could finish it. Let me go back, actually. I'll, I'll give you a little bit more detail on what's happening during contraction. So when you contract, the, the myosin will grab onto that actin and pull it in. All right, so if it's pulling in the actin closer to the middle, it's going to shrink that H zone because the actin, the two parts of the actin, this actin and that actin are going to get closer to each other, thereby shrinking the gap between them and shrinking the H zone. The A band, it's all, whenever you do a shortening contraction, the A band's always the same length. The myosin doesn't change, right? The myosin isn't moving, or lengthening or shortening. The only thing that's lengthening or shortening is how far away the actins are from each other. So the A band should usually be constant. It's not going to get longer or shorter. I band, when you do a shortening contraction, uh, shortening your muscle, because the myosin's pulling the actin in toward the middle, that I band will shrink as well. So when you do a shortening contraction, the I band and the H zone will shrink. If you're doing an eccentric or lengthening contraction, the I band will get bigger because the actin is getting ripped away from the middle, uh, thereby making the I band larger. We can go over this a little bit more in class, uh, but make sure you get these basics. And so that does it for this video. We've talked about the structure of muscles, major, major anatomical features, and we've talked about the structure of a sarcomere, the A-band, the I-band, actin, myosin, troponin, tropomyosin. Uh, make sure you remember these key terms and you'll be in good shape.